My name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. We recently took a few of our lambs to the processor and had them broken down into retail cuts. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to go over what to expect to get back from your lambs when you take them to the butcher and kind of what that process is like, what you need to know before you take them there. The first thing you need to know is when your lambs will be ready. That's determined by a couple of factors, primarily their age and their weight. So we want a lamb that's between six and 12 months of age and around 80 to 100 pounds live weight. Here we raise a Katahdin hair sheep and that's the average for us. For some breeds such as the Suffolk, those weights may be higher. Most of our lambs will go to the processor around nine to 10 months of age. In the US, lamb is classified as any sheep under one year old. After that, the meat is considered mutton. Lamb is younger and therefore usually more tender, but mutton tends to have a richer flavor. Now we lamb in the winter and early spring in January, February, and March, and I'll plan to take some of those lambs to the processor in November. That's about the time that we stop grazing and we shift our flock of sheep to a dry lot or a permanent area where we just feed them hay for several months while the weather is bad and while they're lambing. So ideally, I wanna get those lambs from the previous year to the butcher before I have to start paying for hay. They're likely to have a good layer of fat on them after a long summer of grazing those lush grass. Now, in recent years, it's become more difficult to book those processing dates with the butchers that we prefer. So unfortunately, this past year, we were not able to get a lot of lambs processed before winter hit and we had to settle for an end of January processing day, which is not ideal, and the lamb did come back a little leaner than I would like, but we still had pretty good weights on those animals. A good general rule of thumb is to expect about a 50% yield of meat from the live weight of your animal. So we sent about 80 pound animals and got back about 40 pounds of meat from each of them. Since we sell our lamb by the cut at farmer's market, we have to have it USDA or state inspected. So it's a little bit more difficult to find a qualified butcher to do that. And you're gonna end up paying a little bit more, of course, than if you were going to do it yourself or if you were just getting it processed for home use. And prices have gone up a little bit in the last year. It used to be between 40 and $50 per lamb. Now it's closer to 55, $60 per lamb, but still pretty reasonable to have that service done for you. And for us, that works out to about $1.50 per pound just in the processing cost for that animal. Now, depending on the area you're in and the availability of processors that can do lamb, you're gonna have to call probably several months in advance if you wanna get your chosen processing date. So around the time your lambs are born or even earlier, you're gonna wanna seek out the facility that you're gonna use and make contact with them. And depending on your state regulations, you may need what's called a meat handler's license or something similar to be able to legally transport that animal and have it processed into retail cuts for resale. Now, most of the time when you get to your processor, they'll have a form that you fill out, and this is known as a cut sheet. Some processors don't provide the form. They expect you to either come with a list in hand or they'll sit down with you in the office when you drop off your animals and they will go through all the choices with you. Each facility is gonna handle that differently. So you're gonna to wanna to know ahead of time how you want your animal cut. And a really good resource for this is a book called The Meat Buyer's Guide. And pretty much every processing facility is gonna have a copy of this on hand. It's available for sale through the FFA. You can also find old copies of it on eBay. And it's a really great resource. It shows you all the different cuts that are available from all the different areas of animal and each cut has a number or code associated with it so you can tell the butcher that i want this number cut and this name of cut from the meat buyer's guide and they'll know exactly what you're talking about it removes a lot of confusion from that conversation now you can just have your lamb broken down into what's known as prime cuts and that would be the neck the shoulders the loin and rib cage the legs or hindquarters the, and the shanks. On top of those cuts, you'll have some offal or some organs. Typically liver, heart, and kidneys are reserved from lambs. You're probably gonna end up with a couple pounds of bones and depending on how much you trim from that animal or how much you include in the ground, you're gonna have a few pounds of ground meat or stew meat as well. 
Typically, you're not going to receive the head or the hide back from your processor. The heads are often retained in a USDA inspected facility to do some random disease testing, including for scrapie, which is a prion disease that affects sheep. And regarding the hide, what I was told by my processor is he doesn't have a, any good place to store those. So I would have to wait around till my animal was actually processed and then physically take it from them um, to get it out of their way. Otherwise, it's basically gonna go in their compost. So it is possible to get those things, but not likely. When you're filling out that cut sheet with your butcher, you're also gonna have to decide how many of each cut you want in each package or how much weight in each package. And you're gonna have to decide on the thickness of some of those cuts, especially if you're getting any chops done. In general, we'll package our chops two per pack and one inch thick. So I'm gonna go over some of the basic choices that you have with each of those prime cuts. We're gonna start with the neck. So this is a lamb neck roast. You can see it's a large chunk of bone and meat. So there's gonna be a lot of uh, vertebrae in here, kind of weird star-shaped bones that are hard to work around. So this isn't the type of roast that you would bake in the oven and carve up. This is really more of um, something you would turn into a curry or that you would braise in a sauce. But very nice cut, really well marbled as well. If you don't want the whole neck roast, you can have it sliced into neck chops. And that's what those look like. There's two in this package. You see the center bone. And these are really nice to turn into a curry. So if we follow the animal down from head to tail, after the neck comes the shoulders. I like to get whole shoulder roast. They're bone in. They have the scapula bone and a portion of that front leg. They have a lot of meat on them. They tend to be really well marbled. You can see how much fat is in this. Sometimes they'll have a, a bigger fat cap. Like I said, these were a little bit on the lean side, but this is a really nice piece of meat. Again, for braising, they smoke really well. You kind of have your shoulders sliced similar to the neck roast into shoulder chops, or they're sometimes called blade chops, depending on which direction this, this roast is sliced. But those are just some of the options there. So next we come to the midsection of the animal known as the loin or the saddle and the rib cage. You're gonna have smaller chops known as rib chops or riblets. And these are also known as the little lollipop cuts. So they have a long bone that's just sometimes Frenched or cleaned off. So it's like a nice clean handle, but we leave all that meat on there. Then they have this tenderloin morsel right in the center. Here's another view of a single one just to, so you can kind of get the size. So it's got this long bone and the tender morsel at the center. If you have your loin all cut into chops, you're gonna end up with spare ribs. So you're gonna have these racks of ribs just like you would on a pig. These are great, like baked in the oven or on the smoker. There's a lot of flavor in these. So if you were gonna get a rack of lamb or crown roast, what that is is this rib rack with the rib chops still attached. For the loin, you can have a whole loin roast or you can have it cut into loin chops. And these are like mini little T-bone steaks. There's actually two in there. They're pretty small. There's another package and you can see it has a small bone and the T. These are very, very tender. I prepare them just in a cast iron for a minute or two on each side. And they're so good, just medium rare. Next, we come to the legs. And this is probably my favorite cut. There's so much meat on here. There's a nice big marrow bone in the center. It tends to have a nice fat cap on it and some good marbling. I love to marinate these for 24 hours in like a yogurt and Indian spices and then put it on the smoker all day and it's just perfection. This is gonna be the largest single cut that you'll get from your lambs. So it can easily be sliced into leg chops or leg steaks. And we will frequently put some of the legs into ground because that's a very popular cut. And if I keep all my roasts intact, then I'm not gonna have a lot of trim. I'll end up with maybe five pounds of ground from that one lamb. So if I wanna please my customers and have a lot of ground lamb to go around, I'm gonna have to sacrifice some of my bigger roasts, usually the legs and sometimes the shoulders. And then following down the legs, you're gonna have the shanks. And we get these packaged in twos. These are a little bit on the small side. Sometimes they're cut longer. It just depends on how your processor does it. We actually get the four limbs, which are gonna be a little bit smaller and the hind limbs, which is what you're gonna see more often in like a restaurant setting. 
because it has a wider chunk of meat on there. In other animals, this would also be known as the hock, and this is traditionally a braising cut. I know it's not for everybody, but I'm actually a really big fan of organ meat, especially liver, and my husband's a big fan of heart. So we always ask for those back, and unfortunately this time we did not get them. And according to our processor, if something happens in the slaughtering process where those organs get dirty at all, if there's any question, then they are discarded because those are considered high risk cuts. The liver in particular is really susceptible to absorbing outside bacteria or moisture that gets on it. And it's not something that he wants to fumble around cleaning, but I would rather that he removes them from the food chain before I sell them to one of my customers and get them sick. So I'm fine with that. But that's a conversation that you'll have to have with your own processor if that's something that's important to you. And lastly, you'll get some ground lamb. The ratio of meat to fat really varies depending on how much fat is on your animal. We chose to get a couple of the legs put into ground just so we could have more available for our customers because this is the most popular cut of lamb that we sell. If you do put some of those big bone-in roasts into ground, you're gonna end up with more bones. So these are labeled uh, lamb soup bones or marrow bones. They're really great for making bone broth or stock or the start to a stew. And I have people that will buy these just for their dogs as well. So guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, lambs are fairly simple if you just think about it in those prime cuts. And there's just a few choices, whether you want them whole and bone in, or if you want them sliced into some kind of chop or put into ground. So if you're getting ready to take some of your lambs to the processor for the first time, I really hope this video helped you. If you'd like to see more about how we raise our sheep during the year, you can check out this video right here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.